Hi friends, welcome to Classic Education YouTube channel. Let's learn today about the anti-defection law. Okay, this is one of the very, uh, very well planned and very serious legislation made by the Parliament of India. Okay, before going into the anti-defection law, let me give you some introductory remarks. We, the people of India, having solemnly resolved to constitute into uh, India into a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic, republic, so and so. So these are the words mentioned in the preamble to the constitution of India. See, if you look into these words, wordings, you will decipher the meaning that India is a democratic and sovereign country. Right? What do you mean by the democracy? Democracy is nothing but the, the governance which is ruled by the people themselves. Okay? This is the demo and democracy. That means the rule of the people. And the sovereignty, the word sovereignty is also mentioned in the preamble to the constitution. What do you mean by the sovereignty? Sovereignty means the supreme power. We, the people of India, are the supreme power in our own territorial uh, sphere right india is a uh, union territory right that means it is the territory of uh, different uh, states as well as the uts right see within this geographical sphere we the people of india are the supreme nobody uh, powerful person you know is above the people of india we are the supermost you know power within the territory of india see this is the meaning of sovereignty and democracy right in a democratic country, elections are at the core. Through the election process, we will send our representatives on behalf of the people. That means we send our representatives on behalf of people to make the laws and they will implement the laws. Right? See, in this way, we are the representative democracy. It is also called as the parliamentary democracy. At the apex level of the governance in India, we have the parliament, that is the supreme law making body in the country right parliament to these par to this parliament we will send our representatives through the process of election the election as i said they are at the center of this democracy they are sometimes these elections in india are called as the festival of indian democracy that means they have the too much significance without this election without this free and fair electoral process there can't be you know a meaningful democracy in india we have seen various democracies which have turned into authoritarian states within our neighborhood itself we have seen one failed state where there is you know uh, uh, exchange between democracy and the autocracy see authoritarian government comes one time and another time there will be you know so called democracy so these things happen because if the elections are not held in a free and fair manner democracy is you know destined to be failed we are very you know fortunate and uh, we are fortunate that we are the largest democracy in the country we are the largest and the dynamic uh, example for the democratic countries in the world right but the oldest democracy is the united states of america but the largest with respect to the size of the population we are the largest democratic country in the world right why we are you know uh, discussing about the democracy and anti-defection law today because recently there is one political crisis being unfolded in the state of Maharashtra. That is Maharashtra political crisis. See, with this crisis associated issue is the anti-defection law. Okay. Let's try to understand what is happening in the state of Maharashtra. See, in the Indian polit political uh, field today, the air is full of the in Maharashtra political crisis. Every, you know, uh, political enthusiast is watching very keenly about the developments that are happening in the state of Maharashtra. Some of the MLAs, they are the elected MLAs, they have fled their you know, state and they are residing somewhere else and they have become rebels against their own uh, party, they have become rebels against their own government. They want to, they are trying to establish uh, another form of government that means they want to uh, gain the power right see uh, let us see what actually is happening in the state of Maharashtra 
now uh, first you know uh, let us try to understand total strength of the maharashtra assembly maharashtra has the legislative assembly this assembly has the total strength of 288 members okay this is the total strength uh, in 2019 there was a general elections to the there was a general election to the state of uh, state assembly of maharashtra in that you know election the people you know uh, the various parties were there they won different number of seats but because of the uh, absence of majority party none of the parties they gained the half of this mark okay half of this one 288 is 144 seats none of the parties they you know won the 144 seats because of this there there arose a situation that situation led to the formation of the coalition government that coalition government is popularly now called as the maha vikas agadhi or maharashtra vikas agadhi see this coalition government it is formed by ideologically different parties if you look into the, the parties which i have mentioned here shivasena party nationalist congress party or ncp indian national congress or inc see all of these parties they are completely ideologically different parties their ideology is different their way of thinking is different their preference to the developmental aspects are different but because of the situation demanded these parties coalesced themselves they came together and they formed the maha vikas agadi when there are ideologically different parties are there the government cannot long last there will always be the issues which lead to the differences of opinion if the differences are not you know amicably solved within the uh, parties that will lead to the crisis that is what is happening in the maharashtra now what what is happening is this shivasena is you know having the total strength of five, uh, 55 members okay out of 288 55 seats belong to the shivasena right but uh, among these 55 seats some of the mlas belonging to the same party they have shown the dissatisfaction against their own party and they have rebelled against their own government because of the differences there might be having various reasons but they have said orally that they have differences against the party uh, their own party that's why they have become the rebels now these rebellion shivasena mlas will face the proceedings under the anti defection law we will go will study in detail about the anti defection law just for time being you just know that these rebel mlas which have you know left their state which have left their government uh, in between and then who are staying outside they are facing the threat of provisions of the anti defection law they they might lose their you uh, know membership in the assembly right now two third just remember that uh, we will come to this you know figure later you see if a party is split if the two third members of the party they agree to form another party or if they want to join another party that is allowed under the anti defection law now th uh, around 32 out of 55 around 32 uh, shivasena mls have fled they want to establish the different government see the two third of this 55 two third of 55 is around 36.66 around 37 mlas mlas are required okay for you know uh, to not to face the provisions of the anti defection law we will come to this later if the rebel mlas are 37 or more they will not face the disqualif disqualifications as per the provisions of the anti defection law now this unfolding maharashtra political crisis has thrown spotlight on the anti defection law now because of this crisis because of the rebel mlas the this crisis has led to the spotlight on the anti defection law that means anti defection law has become the sinusure of all the political enthusiasts in the country now everyone is analyzing what will happen whether these mlas will be disqualified or they will be taken back to the government or these mlas you know uh, it, it will become more and more stronger their number of ML, rebel mlas will increase whether they will join with another party or not these kind of you know uh, assumptions are you know taking place in the in political uh, scenario of the country today okay 
Now, this is the situation in Maharashtra. But at the apex of the governance in the state, there is a governor, right? He is the constitutional head in the state. He is the agent of the uh, central government. He is appointed by the president. That means he will oversee all the constitutional mechanism in the state. But what are the options that are available to the, the governor of Maharashtra? He may ask the chief minister to prove his majority. See, whenever there is a doubt, the governor may ask the, uh, the ruling person, that means the head of the government, that is the chief minister, to prove his majority. The chief minister has to go to the floor of the house. There he has to uh, prove his majority, whether sufficient number of uh, MLAs support his government or not. If the required number, that is if 144 MLAs support for his party or for his government, yes, he can continue in the government. Okay, this is one case the governor can exercise another option he may if the chief minister fails to prove his majority if he he is not able to gain the confidence of 144 mlas then the governor will ask the next biggest party to form the government right now the ncp nationalist congress party inc uh, with the support of samajwadi party and other party they are ruling the government right they are ruling the state if this Maharashtra Vikas Agadi fails to prove the majority, then the next biggest party in the state is now the BJP. The governor may ask that next biggest party to form the government. This is second option for the <coughs> governor in the state. Then he may dissolve the assembly based on the recommendations of the council of ministers. Right? This council of ministers is headed by the chief minister. If the chief minister advises the governor to dissolve the lower house in the state, the governor can dissolve the uh, lower house and he can ask for fresh elections. Right? This is another option. But what if the governor will not agree to the advice given by the council of ministers? He may dissolve the house, but in some times he may not dissolve the assembly. He may, because he will act according to the his own discretion. Article 163 in the Constitution of India says that there should be a council of ministers. This council should aid and advise the governor. The governor uh, has to normally act according to the advice given by the council of ministers. But clause 1 of the article 163 says that there shall be a council of ministers with the chief ministers, as chief minister at the head to aid and advise the governor in exercise of his functions. Yes, this is the normal provision. Except in so far as he is by or under this constitution required to exercise his functions or any of them in his discretion. That means there is a much difference between article 74 and article 163. This 74 article of the constitution deals with the president. It says that the president shall act according to the aid and advice given by the council of ministers. Right. He must act according to that advice. He may sometimes he maximum he can deny uh, the advice given by the Council of Ministers for one time. He can ask the Council to reconsider the advice given by the Council of Ministers. But if the Council of Minister Ministers gives the same advice again to the President, the President must act according to the opinion given by the Council of Ministers second time. Right? This is the provision under the Article 74. But Article 163, unlike 74, says that except in so far as he is by or under this constitution required to exercise his functions or any of them in his discretion. That means it gives discretionary power to the governor. Governor has the discretionary power. He may not act according to the aid or the advice given by the Council of Ministers. Now, in this way, the governor will become more powerful compared to the president in, ex in exercising his powers right <coughs> then he may declare the governor may declare the constitutional emergency in the state this constitutional constitutional emergency is nothing but the president's rule according to the article 356 right if the government of the state is not being run according to the provisions of the constitution if the governor feels that there is an emergency to be imposed because the government machinery is not being run according to the provisions of the constitution then he may advise the president to declare 
president's rule or constitutional emergency these are various provisions in front of the governor of maharashtra today let us see what will happen in upcoming days as of now as of you know this video is being recorded this is the scenario uh, that is you know in the maharashtra political uh, atmosphere right <coughs> now now let us come to the actual concept of this today's video that is anti defection law what is anti defection law what do you mean by defection defection is nothing but voluntarily giving up the party membership and you know uh, subscribing to the membership of another party this is defection or fleeing from one party to another party in another context leaving a country and joining another country will also amount to the defection defection has various meanings but in our uh, in this context with respect to the political sphere this defection refers to the leaving one party and joining another party okay this is the defection now the anti defection law or this is an act or as the name suggests this is a law passed by the parliament of india this was passed in the year 19 sorry 1985 yes it included in the constitution as the 10th schedule via the 52nd amendment act 1985 this anti defection law is also called as the 52nd amendment act as the name suggests this is the amendment to the constitution which was inserted this new provision was inserted in the constitution in the 1985 right this is you know also called as the 10th schedule 10th schedule is normally or uh, commonly called as the anti defection law the provisions of this law are inserted in the 10th schedule okay see this is the constitutional provision provision these provisions are whatever the provisions this law or the anti defection law says all of those provisions are included in the constitution that is to the 10th schedule of the constitution this sets the provision this law or the anti defection law sets the provision for the disqualification of elected members what does this law says it says that it says about the disqualifications of the members who are you know elected to the various legislative assemblies or to the parliament okay mps or mlas it talks about the disqualifications of the mps and the mlas okay so this law was it was a response to the toppling of the multiple state state governments by party hopping mlas after the general elections of 1967 see till the 1967 whole of the country was you know dominated by one single party called the indian national congress right there were various nationalist leaders though who, they were the part of national freedom struggle they were the freedom fighters these people were ruling that means these were the till 1967 that means around 7 17 years sorry uh, 20 years from 1947 to 1967 20 years because of the significance of the party or because of the stalwarts in the party the indian national congress was ruling the various states almost all the states were being ruled by this party and this party was in the power in the central government also there was no problem till the 1967 but by 1967 what happened various regional parties started to emerge they wanted to, uh, wanted to establish their power in the various governments but un uh, unfortunately they were not able to form the governments when they you know did not you know form the governments that led to the defections because the mlas or the mps belonging to the different parties they started to you know defect or they started to jump from one party to another party somehow they wanted to be in the power they wanted to exercise the power this power hungriness led to the defections okay there was a concept called or it is very funnily called as the ayaram and gayaram concept that means there was a mla in haryana uh, by name gayalal the gayalal was the haryana mla he switched parties within one day he switched three parties right that was the you know frequency of you know switching the parties during those times 1960s right see because of his switching party oh, thrice in a day that led to the concept called ayaram and gayaram because so much frequently the mlas or mps were changing their party allegiances right 
by one estimate almost 50 percent of the 400 legislators elected to the central and federal parliaments that federal parliament is nothing but your state legislative assemblies okay 50 percent of these 4000 legislators right that means around 2000 people uh, in 1967 and 1971 general elections subsequently defected 50 percent see people are electing these MLAs or MPs from one party but after being elected these uh, representatives are switching their you know uh, parties that means they are betraying the electoral mandate see this was the scenario so much of de uh, defections were taking place then the government thought to prevent this and that thought process led to the passing of the anti-defection law or 52nd constitutional amendment act okay the main aim of this act was to bring the stability in the governments what if the you know st uh, for example uh, let us say one state is you know having the legislative assembly to strength of 100 the 100 uh, out of 100 50 members are you know they are, they have formed the government what if the out of 50 uh, 30 members you know deflect from that party and they join the another party what happens ultimately the the party which has formed the government it will topple down right it will be collapsed that will lead to the political instability in the state so to prevent that kind of political instability the government brought or the central government brought the anti defection law and it made changes to the constitution Now, what are the grounds for disqualification? On what grounds, on what basis these elected representatives can be disqualified? This 52nd Amendment Act or the 10th Schedule or the Anti-Defection Law provides some of the conditions. If these conditions are met, an elected member can be disqualified from his membership either in the Parliament or in the State Legislative Assembly. Look into the first provision. If an elected member voluntarily gives up his membership of a political party, he has to declare that I am voluntarily giving up my political party membership. For example, a person who is elected or who has sub subscribed the membership of the party X, he will voluntarily give up this party and he will join another party Y. Right? In this way, if he voluntarily gives up the earlier party membership, he will be automatically disqualified. Right? Second provision, if he votes or abstains for voting, voting or abstaining from voting that means in such a house contrary to the any direction issued you might be aware of the fact that in the houses of the assembly or in the upper house or lower house in the parliament there will be party whips that means a authorized person who will look after the you know uh, inner house election process he will dictate the party member to act in certain way Th that person is called as the whip if the whip will order something if the elected member acts against the whip issued by the authorized person in the house he will be disqualified right if he votes or abstains from voting in the house against the direction issued by the political party or anyone authorized this anyone authorized is nothing but the whip without obtaining the prior permission if the elected member if he has to vote or if he want to abstain from voting he has to take the permission of the party before doing that kind of act but without taking permission if he does so he will be disqualified right see one more condition or the precondition is attached with this a precondition as a precondition for his disqualification his abstention from voting should not be condoned by his party or the authorized person within 15 days okay he has not taken any permission from the authorized person and he has voted against the order issued by the party but now within 15 days this act of a member should be condoned or it should be you know uh, he should be given uh, permission he should be condoned that means he, sh he can be permitted to do so but if, if the within 15 days this uh, negative act of the elected person against the direction issued by the whip is not condoned he will stand disqualified okay then if any independently elected member this is very important if any independently elected member joins any of the political party after his election he will automatically stands disqualified independent member always remain an independent member in the house okay if he joins any of the party he will be disqualified but there will be another category of the elected member sorry uh, members in the house they are called as the nominated members these nominated members will be nominated by 
the governor in the state by the president in the parliament right these nominated members can join the political party there is no bar but when they can join they these nominated members can join a political party within six months of their nomination if the nominated member joins the party after six months of his nomination he will be disqualified according to the provisions of anti-defection law anti-defection law these are the various conditions under which an elected member can be disqualified okay this is what this law talks about but there are exceptions to this rule these are the grounds of disqualification but there are certain acts that will amount to the disqualification but during that conditions they will not be disqualified what are they they are at least two-thirds of its legislators are in favor of the merger right I said around 32 members MLA's are 32 MLA's belonging to the Shiva Sena party have went outside the uh, state they are residing somewhere right there are 32 ml mlas but if they don't want to they don't want to be disqualified right their strength must be 37 because the legislature party strength of the shiva sena is 55 right two third of this 55 means 37 Right? If 37 member, uh, rebel, member, uh, rebel MLAs are there, they will not you know, attract the provisions of the anti-defection law. If the only number is only 32, it remains only 32, all of them can be disqualified from, by the Speaker of the Legislative Assembly of the Maharashtra. Okay? But what the law says that if, the, if there are two-thirds of the members of the party, if they agree to join another party, they will not be disqualified. But the number is less than two-thirds, they will attract the anti-defection law. Then there are presiding officers. Uh, the presiding officer of the lower house is the speaker and the presiding officer of the upper house is the chairman. Right? They will not attract because they will resign from their party after being elected they have to resign from their political party because this resignation will lead to the neutrality of their decision these speakers they are the they are presiding over the whole of the house in the house the there are different parties right these speakers are the chairman they are above party lines now they will become the constitutional bodies they should not show any of the allegiance to their home party right see in that way if they resign from their party they will not attract the provisions of the anti-defection law these are the two conditions which will not attract the disqualifications now what does this law again says <coughs> The members disqualified under the law can stand for elections. Yes, once they are, uh, they are elected, if they are you know, deflected, uh, after deflection they will become the disqualified or they will lose their membership. But after losing their membership also, in the next upcoming election they can participate in the election and they can become the member of the house again. They can participate from any of the party because now they are you know, disqualified, they have freedom to uh, join any of the party, they can contest from party. Uh, different party and they can become the members there is no bar for that <coughs> okay the decision on the questions as to disqualification and the ground of defection are referred to the chairman or the speaker chairman or speaker are nothing but the presiding officers the defection all the questions related to the defection are determined by the presiding officers okay chairman in the upper house and the speaker in the lower house these decisions of the presiding officers are subjected to the judicial review that means they are not the final authorities yes with respect to the defection within the house they are final authorities but these authority of these speakers are the chairman is subjected to the judicial review the supreme court can ask the ground on which these you know officers have taken the uh, uh, action again uh, according to the provisions of anti-defection law okay uh, we will discuss it later the law does not provide the time frame within which the presiding officer has to decide the defection case yes this is very grave area in the law yes it gives the power to the presiding officer to disqualify a member but uh, in which time in which period of time he has to take action there is there is no mention of this the presiding officer can take any length of time even he can take five years or six years uh, before sometimes there are cases before taking in the action the term of the assembly has no over those kind of instances also there but this is one grave area in the law then 
there is one amendment made to this uh, you know law i said this law was you know enacted in the year 1985 but in the year 2003 there was one change to this law what is that change as per the original 1985 act the defection meant Uh, defection by one third of the elected members of a political party was considered a merger. Yes, earlier if one third of the party members they agree to split their party if they want to join another party, it was called as the merger. And in the, this kind of merger was not, uh, you know, uh, it was not attracting the provisions of the 85 Act. But uh, through the 91st Constitutional Amendment Act in the 2003, there was a change. That change. Uh, says that now at least two thirds of the members of the party have to be in favor of the merger. Earlier, one third members, uh, if the one third members agree, they can join another party. But now, it is now the provision has become more stringent. Now, this is more stricter law. Now, at least two third members have to agree to join another party. Then they will not attract the disqualification. This is the new change to the law in the 2003. Now. instances of defections which did which did not sorry this is which did not attract the provisions of the 10th schedule of the constitution see these are the recent instances uh, wherein two third members agreed and they joined another party but these people did not you know uh, they were not disqualified from the speakers of the assembly okay it was in 2022 very recently in meghalaya okay uh, 12 out of 17 congress mlas joined the trinamool congress uh, in rajasthan the in 2019 the all the mlas of the bahujan uh, samaj party they joined the congress there was no disqualification in again in the same year 2019 out of six telugu desham party members in the rajya sabha they joined the bjp in the andhra pradesh all of these instances they did not attract the uh, disqualifications because all of these mergers were according to the two third uh, law of the uh, two third requirement of the law okay now grounds of disqualification under article 102 and 109 of the constitution yes this is one of the constitutional provision anti defection law is one of the provisions in the constitution which will lead to the disqualification of the members but there is one more article in the constitution which deals with the disqualification of the members of the parliament or members of the state legislative assembly what are they the clause 1 of article 109 this is about the Article one not nine. There are two clauses in the article one not nine. Clause one and clause two, right? Under clause one, there are again some provisions. The, there are same provisions in the article one not nine also. This is article one not two, but in the one not nine article also there are same provisions. But those provisions in the article one not nine are related to the state assembly. Okay, but article one not two deals with the parliament. Okay, the provisions are same. a person shall be disqualified for being chosen as and for being a member of the either house of the parliament he will be disqualified on what grounds okay first ground under article 102 is that if he holds any office of profit that means a uh, serving you know uh, a public servant under the government any of the government whether it is a central government or state government or third tier government or any of the authority or any of the institution which is substantially funded by the government he will be you know treated as holding the office of profit that means he is generating income out of that public office okay if he is holding any office of profit he will be disqualified then if the person who is elected he if he if he is found to be unsound mind if he is not you know uh, under control of his own mind okay he will be uh, disqualified then he is an undischarged solvent in the bank he should not be having any loan or debt or he should not be declared as you know bankrupt okay then if he is not a citizen of india this is very important only the citizens of india can become the members of the assembly or the parliament if a person is not citizen of india he will be disqualified or the present citizen of india if he voluntarily you know acquired the acquired the citizenship of another country now now i am the naturally born citizen of india if i acquire the another country's citizenship automatically my membership will be disqualified then if he shows allegiance 
if he acknowledges or shows the allegiance or adheres to the foreign state instead of showing allegiance to the india or if, if instead of showing allegiance to the constitution of india he shows allegiance to the another country or another constitution he will be disqualified these are the provisions under article 1 not to that will lead to the disqualification of the member of the parliament okay the clause 2 of this article also says that he can be disqualified being the member of either house of the parliament if he, he is so disqualified according to the anti defection law okay these are the provisions along with the anti defection law which will lead to the disqualification of the member in the house then what are the issues related to this anti defection what happens yes he has the freedom this is a democratic country he has some of the freedom of speech and expression he can you know show this allegiance to his party what happens if he joins another party there are issues there's those issues are very you know uh, problematic to the governance of the country they will lead to the betrayal of the mandate of the electorate let us look into that the if these defections will lead to the undermining the representative and parliamentary democracy see this is very serious point it will undermine the representative democracy or parliamentary democracy what do you mean by representative democracy that is nothing but the rule of the people the people have sent their representative to rule on behalf of that they had some trust in a political or political party let us say the people by showing too much you know uh, trust in the party x because of the influence of this you know uh, 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 election manifesto of this party they have voted for this party uh, and they have sent a candidate to the parliament but if you know this candidate joins another party what uh, what happens this will undermine the representative democracy that will undermine the trust bestowed on him right it undermines the trust of the people then it restricts the legislator from voting in line with the conscience this is again very important defections uh, i said uh, the party whip is there he will mandate uh, the party members to act in a certain way if he acts in another way or if he the elected person acts in the uh, conscience uh, in his own conscience he has to attract the anti defection law see this is one negative point with respect to the anti defection law then controversial role of the speaker what happen in uh, because i said the speakers are the above party line they are politically neutral persons sometimes these speakers will act according to the party ideology though on paper they have resigned from the party but they will show some little allegiance to their home party in the speakers in various times especially in the very recent times in the rajasthan in the karnataka they have acted according to the party lines this is the very important you know issue related to the anti defection law so because this speaker is the final authority to decide the disqualification of the member right if the member is about to be disqualified if he belongs to the same party to which the speaker belonged he will not take much action against that right he will not disqualify the member then subversion or betrayal of the electoral mandate yes people showed some trust on the particular representative he switched the allegiance now he has he is acting according to the his part uh, sorry his party line instead of acting according to the you know mandate of the people that that means in that way it is a betrayal to the mandate of the people then it affects the normal functioning of the government now if you look into the uh, parliament uh, sorry uh, maharashtra crisis what is happening there is no government the these all elected representatives they are busy in saving their government but what happens to the developmental activities right there will be stoppage of the government uh, developmental activities there will be stoppage of the implement proper implementation of the social welfare schemes the to, the governance will be affected then it will promote the horse trading as i said there are 32 rebel mlas now if they don't want to be disqualified they need at least five more uh, support of the mlas now horse trading will take place to attract these five mlas the rest of the people will show some you know uh, uh what you call uh, uh, they will you know bribe these people they may show the money or they may assure them the ministerial berths in the government in that way these five people can be sacked they can become part of these 32 you know rebel mlas they can form the government right see this is called as the horse trading that means purchasing the mlas through transaction of money or by showing the <coughs> uh, power uh, i mean by reserving the ministerial berths to these people 
then premature dissolution of the house yes the, still there is there is two and a half year is you know remaining for the legislative assembly of the maharashtra but now there is a situation where there will be premature dissolution of the house may take place right then it will be a burden if the d house is dissolved the state has to go for election again there will be too much burden with respect to the resources with respect to the manpower or with respect to the finance right it is again the negative or it is a, a loss to the state exchequer see these are issues related to the anti defection sorry uh, defections of the legislators now there is one very important supreme court judgment it was in the year 1992 the supreme court uh, gave this verdict in the case called kohito hollohan versus zachilo and others okay this was the case in this case the supreme court gave one very important verdict let us look into that the supreme court in this case especially barred any judicial intervention prior to the decision making stage now just again imagine the political crisis in the maharashtra now they are deciding nothing has come out yet the speaker has not decided the the disqualification of the members the cm has not taken any of the decision uh, i mean he has not advised the governor to dissolve the house none of the decisions have been taken by the state government yet but in this time the supreme court cannot intervene yes supreme court is also observing and it is also knows that there is a failure of the constitutional machinery but at this point of time it will not intervene right judicial review cannot cover proceedings of the legislature under article 212 this is very important article 212 gives the power to the state assembly or to the parliament that means whatever being discussed are the uh, in the parliament or the state legislature they cannot be discussed again in the judicial ambit okay judiciary is barred from questioning the legislative proceedings in the houses okay this is what the article 212 Uh, talks about because of the provisions of the article 212 the supreme court cannot intervene in the proceedings but it can intervene we will come to that point later originally the decision of the presiding officer was final and could not be questioned in the court i said pre uh, presiding officers are the final authorities their uh, decision cannot be questioned anywhere but in this case kohito hollo han versus zachilo and others case in the 1992 supreme court says that the decision given by the speaker can be questioned they are subjected to the judicial review that means the uh, the decision or the disqualification decision taken by the speaker can be questioned in the court and the court can if the court finds that the intentions of the speaker are malafide or if they are perversive the decision can be again reversed okay the disqualified mp can be restored and he can be uh, given back the membership of the house okay this is what the uh, the kohito hollohan case talks about okay that means now the decisions of the presiding officers are subjected to the judicial review then what is the way forward yes this is what is happening this is what the anti defection law is talking about but what has to be done but in this electoral system in this you know representative democracy to experience the free and fair elections and to become role model to the democratic world we have to rectify some of the problems in this sphere right then what has to be done done look into that we have to strengthen the internal democracy of the parties what is internal democracy see the instead of you know creating crisis like the maharashtra if the shivasena uh, had the internal you know democracy that means being open to all the members they have to ask what is happening why the particular member is you know uh, dis uh, uh, dissatisfied with the policies of the government why he he is becoming the rebel against the party he has to the the party leader has to con uh, convene all the members and from time to time he has to take the inputs so that if that kind of internal mechanism is there there will not be any differences of opinion if the democracy internal democracy is not established properly that will lead to the crisis like maharashtra right then the second administrative reforms commission it is also called second arc uh, established by the central government it said it gave very important recommendation that is transfer the power of disqualifying a mp or mla from presiding officers to the 
president or the governor as the case may be right if the mp has to be disqualified that that disqualification has to be taken by the president if a M mla has to be disqualified according to the 52nd amendment act or the uh, 10th schedule the governor has to uh, take the final decision but before taking the final decision of disqualification this president and the governor they have to act according to the advice given by the election commission but now the election commission has to look into or it has to inquire all the details regarding the disqualification if the election commission recommends the president or the governor to disqualify a mp or mla then they can take the final uh, call this is what the second administrative reforms uh, commission is talking about i think this is the best way forward because sometimes these speakers will you know act according to the their own party uh, ideology right fix the time period for presiding officer I, I said this law is absent or it is mute about the time period within which a speaker has to take the decision sometimes these speakers will take long time six months or ten months or three four years right to avoid that kind of long gap to take a decision there should be a fixed time period the vice president of india the present vice president that is the venkaiya naidu he is also the chairman of the rajya sabha right chairman of the rajya sabha and the supreme court they are of the opinion that there should be a fixed time period of 3 months if there is a question of disqualification before the uh, speaker he has to dispose of that case within 3 months right if uh, the government of india includes all of these provisions then i think there will be in you know, a better way forward we can really enjoy the free and fair elections i think there will be continuous stability in the state governments or in the parliament okay this is all about the maharashtra political crisis and associated anti defection law okay